We are honored today to be speaking with Dr. William Height, Senior Vice President and Worldwide Therapeutic Area Head of Oncology of Johnson & Johnson Pharmaceuticals Research and Development, LLC. He was AACR President from 2007 to 2008. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. You gave the keynote, Overcoming Barriers to New Drug Development. What are the biggest barriers to new drug development today? I think we today reviewed several barriers and it's hard to know what the biggest are. But I think the process really has to do with the whole model of translational research and how we go from a really good idea uh, to, the, to bringing a drug uh, into the clinic for patients. It's a very complicated, uh, complex process. And there are difficulties along the way. And I reviewed a few of them. I think um, one of the more important ones is understanding uh, how complex the biology of human cancers really are and then stepping back for a moment and trying to imagine that by blocking one of the complicated pathways with a single drug, that this might actually give a really beneficial effect to patients. And what we found over the years that that's very hard to do, and that combination drugs seem to, combination of drugs seem to work better, or drugs that are in fact combinations in themselves, like multi-targeted kinase inhibitors, which would inhibit several targets seem to be um, a fairly useful approach. So that was one of the several. I could give you more if you like. Um, no, that's okay. But what can, what can cancer researchers do to break down some of these barriers? And also, what can industry do? Mm. Well, I think one of the most important thing for cancer researchers who are in academic institutions uh, or government institutions where the immediate goal is not to develop a drug uh, is really to try to enhance our knowledge. How do the complex pathways interact? Are there nodal points that if you inhibited a nodal point, you would get <clears throat> more bang for your buck? <clears throat> Animal models, predictive models, that might say if this drug worked in this model, it has a high probability of success in the clinic. Those are completely lacking. The genetically engineered mouse models look interesting. The use of fresh human tumors directly into mice looks interesting, but whether they're truly predictive of a drug that will work in the clinic really remains to be seen. And, what, and industry, when it comes to industry, what can yeah. they do? Well, industry works all the time trying to break down uh, the barriers. It right now, on average, costs about $2 billion uh, to bring a drug into, pa into, the clinic, into patients. And the failure rate, which accounts for most of that cost, is unbelievably high of all the drugs entering the clinic, not just the ones in discovery, but entering the clinic, only about 10% ever make it. And this is uh, really an unsustainable model. So industry is working on um, how to decrease failures. Um, do we have a deeper understanding of disease processes and not just a target? And do we get that understanding by collaborating with academic experts on diseases? And I think by putting those complementary expertise uh, together of people who study diseases in academic institutions and drug development in the pharmaceutical industry, I think there's going to be some really good answers there. From your perspective, how can we accelerate translational research and drug development? Yeah, well, I think the acceleration process has to do with several things. Um, the, the deeper understanding of the biology, the clearer the pathway it will be to get a drug into the clinic. It will decrease the failure rates. It will help you enormously. I think one of the things that have actually led us astray um, has been a reliance and being enamored with the incredible <clears throat> excuse me, technical, <clears throat> technical things that we can do. Mm -hmm. So for example, since we can clone, express, and sequence every gene and make uh, crystals of active sites and, and use structural biology to make drugs, we forget that just hitting the target in a test tube isn't the same as knowing where to use that drug in the clinic. And as a result, we wind up with very diffuse clinical development plans, extremely expensive. I've referred to them as pin the tail on the donkey. You know, where's the drug going to work? I think through a much deeper understanding of the biology of human disease, we'll be able to predict more accurately how our drugs will work, which patients will benefit from those drugs through biomarkers and companion diagnostics, and ultimately that'll accelerate the process. Dr. Haidt, thank you so much. My pleasure.